Hello again. So Synth1 Librarian has been around for a couple of years now, but a few people still find the installation process a little bit tricky. So in this video I'm going to walk through the installation step by step. The things that you'll need to download are the Synth1 VST itself. Now the original site's disappeared so you'll have to hunt around online to find the zip file. Version 113 Beta 3 appears to be the last version that was released, as you can see here. The second thing that you'll need is a Synth1 Librarian Installer. You can find it on the downloads page on my website. Now, although I've provided EXE installers and zip files, I always recommend using the EXE as it takes care of installing the various dependencies and frameworks that the librarian needs. I'm using the 64-bit version of Windows, so I've downloaded the 64-bit version of Synth Librarian. And finally, you'll need the presets archives. Again, you'll have to hunt around online to find these zip files. The important thing is picking the correct format. Each zip should contain one bank's worth of patches. So if you download one of the larger archive packs, make sure that the contents are zip files that each contain a bank. OK, let's move on to installing Synth1 to start with. First, find the location where you keep your VSTs. In my case, I stored them on the D drive under a folder called VSTs. Now often, the VSTs are installed under the Program Files folder on the C drive, but this can sometimes cause problems with that annoying permissions dialog, so I don't use that location personally. So let's unzip Synth1 into the VSTs folder. I'll just right click and drag over here, and I will say Extract. And there it is. If you've never run Synth1 before, run the init settings program. This creates Synth1's configuration file for you. You'll get some warning dialogs, but they only matter if you already have Synth1 configured on your machine. So now that we've run that, we should test that Synth1 actually works. So load up your door, I'm using FL Studio for this demo, and make sure that it points to your VST folder. So we go to Manage Plugins, and this is where you can add an entry for your VSTs. If we click Find More Plugins, it should detect Synth1. Which I can see down here. So let's give it a try. Okay, that seems to be working. Try another patch. Okay, that looks okay. So we now know that Synth1 is working correctly. The next step is to configure the zip bank folder, and this is where we'll need our preset archive files. So here's the zip bank folder that Synth1 sees. We'll open that. There's only a couple of zips in there. And we'll go to our zip banks. Go ahead and dump just a few of the zip files into the zip bank folder. We'll now return back to FL Studio. When we click on the preset here, it should show us the full library. There we are. So let's just make sure that these work. Okay, good. So now we have the zip bank configured as well. Now we can move on to installing the librarian. Launch the installer. At this point we want to install the librarian into the VSTs folder. 
by default it's giving us C colon slash VSTs but because mine are on the D drive I'm going to install to there. As the installer runs you'll be presented with various dialogues as it installs the various dependencies and frameworks. Just click OK or Yes to these. And we're done. Now we're going to configure Synthwin Librarian. So let's go back to the door and have it rescan the VSTs again. And there it is down at the bottom. Now doors like FL Studio list all of the DLLs that come with Synth1 Librarian. I don't really know why it does that because only actual VST DLLs should be detected. So most of these other ones in orange are unnecessary. The only important one here is Synth1.Librarian.64 where the 64 represents the 64-bit version that we're running with. Let's now load Synth Librarian and configure it. There it is. On the library tab, we need to tell the librarian where Synth1 is. So let's do that now. We also need to tell the librarian where the zip bank folder is. So let's do that too. If you look at the messages, it's telling us to restart the plugin. Now we could just close the plugin and then reopen it again. But some doors keep the plugin cached in memory, so restarting the door is the best option. Let's do that now. Now with the door restarted, we can test Synth1 Librarian. Let's load it up. And let's see if it's connected to Synth1. We click this button here, and we see the Synth1 dialog. Let's see if it makes any sound. Okay, success! So the final step now is to build a library. So let's hide Synth1 and move on to building the library. To quickly test that the build works, we'll start with a small set of zip files, the ones that we copied in originally. We just click build and we wait for it to finish. Done. Let's see what we have. Okay, excellent. So the import works. We can go back and copy the rest of the archives into the zip bank folder. So this is where our synth1 VST zip bank folder is. And we'll go here and we'll literally copy everything across. Done. Go back to the librarian now. And go back to the library tab. Hit build. You can make yourself a cup of tea while it imports. And it's done. Obviously, the time depends on how powerful your machine is. I found that multiple cores and an SSD work best. I did consider including a pre-built library in the installation, but the original creators of the patches may have objected, so I didn't. Anyway, we can now go through all of the categories and see that it's imported everything. 
You can also check the banks, and we can see all of the zip bank files here. Excellent. Now I'll just tell you about a few of the problems you may run into. The first one is that Windows may not trust the EXE installer. I've included the MD5 and SHA checksums on the download page, which you can find here. If you use any file integrity checker, you can verify that the installer's checksums match up with these ones. Or if you're really paranoid, you could just download the portable zip, but then you'd have to install all of the prerequisites manually. You can find the prerequisites at the bottom under this section here. Again, if you've got a 64-bit OS, you'll install these ones. And if you've got a 32-bit OS, you'll install these ones. The second problem you may have is that the zip files are the wrong format. As I mentioned earlier, the librarian expects to find a bunch of zip files, and each zip file should represent a single bank. So if we look inside one of these, you'll see that there are patch files only for that bank. And the third most common problem is that no sound comes out of the librarian. So there are two things that need to happen. Firstly, Synth1 librarian must know where the synth1 VST DLL is, and secondly, you must restart your door after changing this value. Only then will the librarian be able to see synth1 and make a sound. There is a technical explanation for this. Whenever any door loads a VST, the door immediately interrogates that VST for its capabilities to determine whether it's a synth or it's an effects VST. Because the librarian can't initially see Synth1, it reports back to the door that it has no capabilities, and that's why no sound comes out of the door. But even when you tell the librarian where the Synth1 DLL is, the door doesn't then re-interrogate the librarian VST, so you have to restart the door for it to re-interrogate the librarian and get the correct values back. So I think that wraps it up. Leave your comments and your likes below, and if you have any other helpful tips that other people should know about, please leave them below too. Bye for now.